In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use Blue Sky Plan to plan a case for um, a placement of an MSE appliance. That's a form of MARPI, which is Micro Implant Assisted Rapid Palo Expansion. And so I'm going to kind of walk you through what this looks like. And to give you a little background, this is what an MSC appliance looks like. It looks like a traditional uh, RPE, Rapid Palo Expander, except it's got, if you see up here, it's got four implants that will engage the palate on either side of the mid-palatal suture so that we can expand. And as we expand, the implants engage the actual base, uh, the palate itself, and separate the suture uh, to get true skeletal expansion rather than just uh, tipping of the molars. So let's get back into... Uh, Blue Sky Plan, um, and so uh, if you're new, if if you're watching this video and it's brand new, you'll notice that the software looks a little different. Uh, this is the new release of the software that should be uh, at the time of this recording um, on December 11th. That should be coming out any day now. So I'm gonna click on Surgical Guides, and it's gonna ask me to import a uh, do what I see what I want to do. I'm gonna go right to this middle option, which is more more akin to the advanced mode, and I'm gonna find my file. Um, and in this case, I'm looking for a CT scan of an uh, ortho patient. And where is he? There we go. Okay, so I've found the file. I've clicked on the folder that contains the CT scan. You don't have to go all the way into, the, into it, but um, here we go. Here's his scan. It's anonymized. Hit OK. And now I'm going to wait for this to load. At the very beginning, we're going to give, have the option to orient the scan. This helps us in case the patient's head was um, turned to the left or right or their chin was up or down. Um, you'll notice that it is an open bite scan, which that we normally do um, because of the bite stick. You can take it completely closed. I prefer open because it's going to allow us to align the digital model, the STL model, of the patient's mouth a little better. So, <clears throat> so it doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect here, um, but try to get it you know fairly aligned um, if it's extremely off it is very important that you get it corrected it'll help you moving forward uh, a lot okay so here we go and now it's going to automatically ask us do we want to go ahead and import an STL model or whatnot to different options I'm going to go right to the STL model once again, I need to go find his folder. And we're going to be working on the maxilla. Here it is. You can see how constricted he is. And the software is going to be automatically attempting to align this. We tell it, make sure we tell it it's a maxilla. And now it's doing the automatic alignment. Sometimes it doesn't get the automatic alignment. You have to do some manual uh, modifications. But for the most part, I would say at least 19 out of 20, we'll say 95% of the time, it gets it right away. Okay, so it's making sure, it's telling us to make sure that it's aligned. Don't just assume that it is. And I 100% agree with that. So first of all, let's go ahead and um, change this a little bit so we can see a little better here. All right, so I'm just, I'm up here in this top left view and I'm just wheeling around and I can see that the green line fully envelops the upper teeth. Now all that's doing is assuring me that it is in fact well aligned. And... The focal trough isn't real wide, that's why it's black in there. So if I want to make that wider, that's actually what I was adjusting before by moving the whole thing forward. Um, more constricted, narrower arches are going to be slightly more challenging to create a, an ideal focal trough. That's what this shape is. It's, it's what generates our pan down here. You can move things around and have your pan look different, but it's not really, it's more diagnostic. It's not really relevant other than for diagnostics. Okay, so we're looking good there. And then I also will come up to this view and look at it from this view. And you can see that as his cuss tips and incised ledges disappear, it is, uh, the outline is also disappearing, the green outline. And I'm just grabbing this slider. You can also wheel your mouse button up, mouse button up and down. So all this is doing is making sure that these two 
the green STL model of the patient's mouth and the DICOM data set are aligned. Don't use this view because if you look in this view, it, I mean, you might think it's not aligned. It doesn't, it looks more green on this side, a little gray there. I mean, is it perfect? No, but honestly, this will actually throw you off, especially if the patient has any restorations, metal restorations in particular. So trust this outline. This outline will be much more true than this. 3D view is not helpful for that. But once I'm once I know that it's aligned, I'm good to go. I can start planning. I go up to the panels, I can come down to surfaces, and now I can come over and actually turn off. If you look where my little checkbox is here over on the right side, I'm gonna turn off the visible because I don't need to see the CT scan. Um, I'm gonna be looking in the 2D cross sections uh, you know, for the actual bone involvement and whatnot. So I'm all ready to start planning my MSE appliance. So now what I'm gonna do is I have a separate folder that was provided by um, Igor at Great Lakes Ortho. He uh, uses these for him for himself for planning. And so I'm gonna use them in a 3D uh, die you know, a more of a surgical setting. So this is so constricted, I'm gonna be very surprised if I could fit anything larger than an eight millimeter MSE um, in there. So I'm just gonna grab this, drag and drop it. We'll, we'll find, we'll call it, let it, call it a mandible, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna to want to automatically align it and, and possibly, and we're just gonna skip that. So, okay, so here is the appliance. I am going to come over to uh, panels, model manipulation. Okay. And so now if I come over here, I should be able to click on this little button right here. There's all these different options of how you can align this and manual is what I want. I just want to be able to turn it upside down and bring it right up in here. Oops. Control Z or the little back arrows right here. And I'm just going to If you if the if it gets a lot of whack, let's say it's like this, the orientation, just move it back to ideal. Turn off the tool and turn it back on and it'll recenter. Okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but for visual, it's nice to have it pretty close. This isn't perfect, but it's close enough. I can grab the whole thing and position it where I want it, okay? And for now, this is just sort of eyeballing it. We're not even looking at the CT scan, which is fine. In a perfect world, or at least the way it's this device is intended, it's supposed to be between the first molars. So if we've got it right here, we can now look at depth and we can drop it on down as far as we can go without the pins impeding tissue or as minimal impedance of tissue as possible. And so now we can start to see, well, how far in are we? And when Igor made these files, he marked them with millimeter increments for we, so we can know how far away it is. And so, for instance, from this view, we've got one millimeter, two millimeter. We'd like to be at two millimeters, no more than two millimeters away. And so right there, the front ones are at two millimeters, but the rear ones are much farther away, which tells me I'm going to have to tilt it forward. Pretty, pretty makes a fair amount of sense. So now we've got, we are at one millimeter in the back and two millimeters in the back. Okay, and these pins are just barely impeding on this side. And just barely touching on that side and this side. I think we're pretty well centered. Now you can also rotate it if necessary. Okay. And so this would be just more like the lab-based approach and it looks pretty good. I would say it fits pretty well, but the truth is we have no idea if there's bone here or not. You know, we don't really know until we overlay the CT scan, but this is a starting point. If we've got thick bone in the area of these, well, then we stop. Send this to the lab, and this is what we want. Um, all right, so now let's minimize this view. There's little triangles right here. I apologize to mention that allows us to maximize this window. So now we can come over here, and I'm going to go to Views, Perspectives, MPR. Okay, it's gonna change our layout. This is the traditional CT layout. I don't like this from implant planning, but from an ortho perspective, this is pretty darn good actually. 
So now I can see that these are engaging palette. He's got a fairly long palette, meaning it goes fairly far posteriorly. And so we are engaging bone, in fact. Um, it's pretty thin, but the palette always is. So now you can decide, do I need to go farther forward to engage thicker bone? But as we go forward, we will encounter the issue of um, uh, of it uh, interfering with uh, or getting narrower up front. So I can grab the whole thing and I can actually just use my arrows keys on my keyboard. I was just pushing to the right, making it slide to the right, and I can just, I'm just making it parallel so that I know that my pins are going to be relatively, it's not going to be perfect. I'll have to look in the 3D view, but I can start sliding forward if I want. I haven't gone too far forward, but I'm just on the mesial aspect of the mo first molars, maybe in a little bit thicker bone here. And there we go. You can also evaluate up in this view the suture itself. Now I'm in a limited field of view CT, so it stops up here. It's fine, but you can see where his suture has not fully formed yet, or is not fully, you know, densified. And I can also say, well, it's a little bit leaning this way. So you know what? Let me go ahead and turn this. And if it becomes too finicky, just hold your mouse, drag out away, and you can be a little bit more fine-tuned in your movements. Okay. And I'm going to left click, slide it over, and now we are as centered and you can use this as well or your your wheel and your mouse and say that you know i'm engaged in pretty good bone from here on through and this is the greatest amount of impedance of the pins is right here you could ask the tech to you know Igor to go ahead and shave these if you want um probably wouldn't even matter because it's i mean it's you got plenty of soft tissue to engage there it's not going to hurt the patient um especially if they're numb for the actual yeah, it's not going to hurt them. Um, <clears throat> so now you know you're, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, now you know that it's going to fit and you're good to go. You know exactly where you want it. And so if, uh, if you're, if the lab that's making this, uh, Igor is using this, um, software, then he could just load this up or we can just export these files and he can do with it as he will, as he wishes. I mean, he might not, there's ways to actually use this to guide the design of the actual appliance, creating little pins that it would slide over top of, um, which is up to him if he wants to do it that way. Or he can just use this as a visual reference and try to match this to the best of his ability. So anyway, um, if if he want, elected to do it, I'm going to show you how that could work. So anyway, at, at this point, we're all done. We know we have it where we want, and I'm going to come up here to the file export data you do need to own exports for this function it's not going to charge you anything because we haven't created anything uh, we just moved files around but it still have to have exports so by five or if it's your first installation it should come with two and we're only going to export these two objects hit export create a new folder msc set up and so here we go <clears throat> so here's here's this folder that's got these two things in here these two the arch and the appliance so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open this up in mesh mixer which is a free software the one i was using is blue sky plan blueskyplan.com or meshmixer.com now this is a little is a different type of software here. Um, it's another CAD software. Um, I'm gonna drag and drop this back in here. Append. That means just kind of add it to it. Append. No. It asked me if I wanted it to move, and of course I don't. I hit yes and for some accident. So at this point, I haven't tried this, but I'm betting that if I hit the select button up here. And hover over top of, uh, well, it looks like maybe they, it was created as a solid object. That's fine. I can still work with this. Select. So, 
what I'll what I'll do instead is I will come in here and edit plane cut. And I'm just going to cut just like this. Hit the flip button, this little blue. Slide it up just a little bit and hit accept. Now the only things that are sticking out are these. So now if I were to 3D print this model, everything, the holes that would help to orient the actual appliance would be there. So your lab technician can literally just align the appliance and um, to these holes and fabricate the arms and they're good to go. So um, I'll leave it to them. There's different ways to base. I will show you right quick in case you're not familiar with the software. If I click up here and change it to the maxillary anatomy model, now I'm manipulating this model again. I can actually click right here to close model. Now, the problem is, is that my default, I'm gonna just do it and I'll talk. My default is going to be a short model because I don't need the palette in most of my situations when I'm closing the model. And so the model height will most likely clip off the palette and we'll see what it looks like. Um, but if that happens, oh, it didn't, perfect. Well, this would model would have been perfectly fine to close. So now, when I, if I had sent this one instead, let's just go ahead and do that again. Export data. Now I'm gonna turn off the green one and just the stone model, the yellow one, and the appliance, export. I'll make a new folder, I'll just call it closed model. All right, so. For comparison's sake, I've got this fo closed folder right here. And let me just drag and drop the stone model in here so you can kind of see the difference. So now we've got the pin sticking out of a closed printable model. And if you're thinking, well, what do I do about these? I can just hit edit, plain cut, and just cut them right within the model. Hit accept, and now this whole object should be easily printed as is, and they can go to town. Okay, um, I'll create another video for how to um, ditch these teeth right here. Uh, and in fact, I'm just gonna keep recording, but I'm gonna stop this video uh, for now. Um, yeah, all right, hopefully, this helps.